Hello everyone, uh, good evening. And uh, thank you so much for joining for this workshop. We will wait for two or three more minutes so that more people can join and then we can initiate the workshop. Uh, before we start, a few um, ground rules. Please uh, keep yourself on mute. And in case you have any questions or queries, please note it down and we will be addressing it by the end of the workshop. And uh, yeah. And in case um, uh, either of the panelists are not audible, and if you face some difficulty, just drop a uh, text in the chat box. Uh, the workshop will be uh, hosted in English. And in case someone wants us to switch the language as well, please let us and we'll try our best to translate. We'll start at uh, four, six. Okay, can someone just confirm if the screen is visible? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you, thank you. And am I audible? Is it fine? Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes. Yes, 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 you are audible. All right. Um, okay, I think we can start now and uh, I'll request my co-host to let people in while I think there are still some people in the waiting room. So, Good evening, good morning, everyone, wherever you are located geographically. Uh, my name is Manzer. I am part of Project Edu Access team. And today we will be covering, um, we, uh, we will be talking about achievement scholarship. It will be an overview of the scholarship um, and what exactly is the requirement and how can you proceed further. And I'm also being joined by uh, two fellow achievement scholars. Uh, moving further. So, uh, yeah. This is the outline of the workshop. So we will be talking briefly about the creative access. I will be introducing you to the panelists. Then we move to the achievement scholarship, the eligibility criteria, what exactly is the process and the timeline, uh, and the most crucial part, the essays, which will, will be uh, the first round of application. Uh, and then some, uh, some discussion on letter of recommendation, interview process, and lastly, we will be addressing questions. Um, before we proceed further, a brief introduction to Project Ed to Access. Um, as we all know now that access to higher education has mostly been uh, privileged for many of us, but uh, there are there are learners from some communities who are who have been systematically denied through different barriers. Uh, this can be information barrier, dispositional barriers, and even access to information is not um, quite uniform. So addressing these challenges, Project Ed to Access is a modest attempt to improve inclusivity in higher education institutes um, by removing or addressing these barriers uh, specifically for the communities from South Asia. Last year, we were working only, uh, only for the learners from India. Uh, this year, we have expanded to Pakistan as well as Afghanistan. And um, we hope to achieve this by providing expert mentorship, support, and guidance to learners. Um, and this is our second year of uh, operation, and we really hope that it goes well. So today's panelist uh, joining us, we have Sadaf Mir, who is pursuing uh, an MA in Education Economics from UCL. Uh, she is currently a Chilean scholar and she is currently in London. Uh, along with me, we have uh, Jay Lakshmi, who is an incoming Chilean scholar who has recently received a Chilean scholarship from India. And she will be pursuing her LNM in Human Rights, Conflict and Justice from SOAS, University of London. Um, and that's me. I have pursued an MSc in evidence-based social intervention policy evaluation, the long name, that's where the short form. Um, I was the Chilean scholar in 2021-22, and I did it from University of Oxford. So let's talk about Chilean scholarship. What exactly is this? And um, what exactly will you will be getting as part of the scholarship? So the scholarship is funded by UK government's international scholarship program team, uh, and it's only for master's courses only. So first and foremost, please be very wary of the fact that it only funds your master's degree, okay? 
not your PhD in the UK. And it's only for the UK. Uh, most of the courses, most of the master's courses in the UK um, are 12 months long or nine months long, not more than that. So Chevening on the website will have a list of eligible courses, which are from, which ranges from nine months to 12 months long. If, if there are any master's courses, which are, which are for two years, uh, which, which are for two years of duration, they will not be uh, eligible for scholarship on the Chevening. Okay. So before, once you start doing your uh, preliminary research, please make sure to go on the website of Chevening and look at the list of eligible courses. Most of the courses, which are from between nine months to 12 months long are uh, listed there. This is being funded by FCD office. Uh, and the prime motive and the prime vision and mission of uh, Chevening is to support future leaders, future change makers, uh, who later uh, go on and influence uh, policy and different uh, sectors in their, in, their, in their host country. Okay. Um, the scholarship entails following parts. It will be covering your tuition fee. So whatever your tuition fee uh, for the master's course, it will be covered by Chevening except there is a cap on the MBA courses. So in case you are pursuing an MBA from the UK and you forget the achievement scholarship, it will only be covering an amount up to 22,000 pounds. So let's say your MBA is costing you 30,000 pounds, okay, the tuition fee. So achievement will be giving only 22,000 pounds and the remaining 8,000 pounds, that is eight lakh rupees uh, roughly, you will have to uh, bring in from yourself. That is only for the MBA courses. The rest, all of the courses are being covered by achievement. So the tuition fees will be covered. You will be getting a monthly stipend. Um, currently, it's somewhere around 1,400 pounds. Uh, uh, South can rectify if I'm wrong. So for London, uh, the, the colleges which are based in London, you will be getting 1,400 pounds, 1,500 pounds. 1,500 right now. Okay, so 1,500 for London. And for other cities, I think it's somewhere around 1,300 pounds. You will be getting an airfare from India, you know, from India to the UK and also return. So the return flight tickets. Entire visa cost, health charge, um, uh, uh, all the visa related costs will be covered by Chevening. Once you arrive in the UK, you will be getting an allowance. And also, once you are about to come to your host country, that is India, you will be getting a departure allowance. If you have to attend Chevening events, that is, let's say, um, a farewell event or orientation event, for that as well, you get a small amount of grant through Chevening. So these are largely uh, uh, the monetary benefits and other benefits that you get. Apart from that, one of the most important uh, advantage of achieving a scholarship is the network you'll be part of. Uh, currently, we have more than 5,000 alumni who are achieving scholars, uh, and they are spread widely across the globe. So every year, uh, roughly around 1,300 scholars from the globe, across the globe, they come to study their uh, masters in the UK. So you become part of a huge cohort and people from different backgrounds um, uh, you will be meeting them while you're sitting in the UK. This is largely about the scholarship. Let's go to the eligibility criteria. Um, you must be a citizen, so yes, you should have a valid uh, ID card, which proves that you are from this country. So you should be holding a valid passport, and you should have a degree, undergrad degree. So either you are about to graduate, or you have already graduated only then you will be eligible for the Chevening scholarship. You should have at least two years of work experience that is equivalent to 2,800 hours. Now this work experience can be full-time, can be part-time, can be internship, voluntary work, research experience. But this research experience should not be part of your, let's say, let's say if you're, if you're pursuing a course and the research is a part of your curriculum, that will not be counted. Okay, but if you have pursued research independently, if you have done internships separately from your uh, course, then you are eligible to count, you, you can list it as part of the experience. Now, some might ask, what is this 2,800 hours? How do we calculate that? So when you'll be filling the application on the portal, uh, they have a calculator. So you just need to write the number of hours you have put in every week, uh, number of days. Uh, let's say you work three days a week and you give four hours every day. So that will automatically calculate from that particular work experience. And by the end, it will, it will give you a cumulative number. And that should be more than 2,800 hours or two years to be on a safer side. So please be very careful about listing your voluntary internship, non uh, and uh, non-paid and unpaid, unpaid experience as well. Uh, you'll have to come back to India after your course is completed. For at least two years, you'll have to stay here. So if there are people who plan to go back 
uh, who plan to settle down in the UK after their degree, please do not apply for the scholarship uh, because Chevening will not let you stay there once your visa has expired. And it usually expires after six months or five months of your course completion. Okay. You should apply to three courses and you should have at least one unconditional offer by mid July next year. So the process will start. We, I'll be talking about the uh, direction, we'll talk about the process as well. But next year, uh, around July, by July, you should have one unconditional offer, which means you have fulfilled all the conditions laid by the university in the offer letter. Okay. Once you have all of this, you are eligible for the, uh, you can apply for the scholarship. Um, I have briefly, I'll briefly talk about what exactly the selection criteria, but in the further slides, both the Jay Lakshmi and Sadaf will be talking about specific essays. So largely the essays and the selection criteria of Shivani looks at your leadership and networking skills. What exactly do you plan to st study in the UK and what are your career goals and how does it align with um, your, your, your course of selection? Like if you are studying public policy and how is it aligning with your career? Okay. So uh, your essays on leadership and influence will be assessed. Networking, we already talked about it. What has your work been, been in your field and how how uh, rigorously you have worked and how committed you are towards the change and all of that is being considered when they look at the essay. Uh, references also, um, you have to shortlist three universities. At this point of time, when you're filling the application, you just need to list the courses. You don't need to have the offer letter because any of the university applications open in September, October, okay? Uh, and I've talked about the career goal as well. One important, You're, you're not audible, Mansur. Sir, you muted yourself. Is this better now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So uh, if I like your attention on this particular part, the career goals here, whatever career goals you list, it should in some aspect, in some capacity, align with the UK government's work in India, okay, in particular, uh, in your in that particular home country, uh, that way it sets your application apart. Um, for that, you need to do some research. What exactly your field is, and is UK working in that domain in, in the country? And I'm sure there are many projects going on. Uh, anyway, um, my panelists will be covering these essays in detail in further slides. All right, I think from here on we have uh, Jay Lakshmi. Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, I will be taking you all through the application timeline, application process, and the first two essays um, in sharing. All right. So, am I audible? Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 So the process of selecting shaming scholars takes a minimum of eight months from the application deadline to when applicants are conditionally awarded, uh, selected for an award. All right. So I will give you an overview of the application and selection process. Um, applications for the academic year 2024-2025 will open up sometime in September 2023. The application timeline with exact dates for 2023 will be updated soon on their website. So I suggest you keep an eye out for their dates on the Shevning website. As of now, I don't see the exact dates being mentioned. So applications usually open up in the month of August or September every year. For, for me, it was um, August 2nd, but now um, I think they're opening up sometime in September. Uh, and applications are open for approximately three months. So you have sufficient time to work on your four essays, fill out the application form with personal details, educational qualifications, professional details, etc. Um, so I, I also suggest you identify two important people you know, um, either at work or someone who has taught you uh, who can write letters of uh, references or letters of recommendation for you. So I suggest you reach out to them uh, because references are an integral part of Shevning um, selection process, you must identify uh, two people. You must supply names of two referees when you submit your application. And if, for any detailed information on who can be a referee uh, is out on the Shevning website, or we can even take it up during the Q&A session. So now moving on um, from November to February, that's like, uh, you know, 
three months uh, after you submit your application. Uh, this is the time for them to scrutinize your applications. Once the embassy or high commission has reviewed the applications that were passed on to them, they produce a shortlist of those they will, interv in they will invite for an interview. So usually around mid-Feb uh, is when the shortlisted candidates for the interview will be notified. Um, and mid-Feb to mid-April, uh, that's around two months, um, is when the interviews will be conducted. The interview panel will include representatives from the British Embassy or High Commission. And they'll also be, I think, one person uh, from your relevant, um, you know, uh, professional uh, uh, space. Like, for instance, I'm a lawyer. So when I was being interviewed, there was another practicing lawyer, you know, who was part of my interview panel, uh, apart from the representatives from the British uh, Embassy. And so mid-April to mid-June is when there's waiting period. So there's like two months of waiting period once um, they finish all the interviews. June is when all the applicants, uh, applicants mid-June to third week or fourth week of June is when all the applicants will be informed of their uh, outcome. Uh, uh, yeah, around early to mid-June. July 2nd week is the deadline to submit one conditional offer letter from any UK university. Um, I also suggest you don't wait for the outcome of your interview or the application process to apply your, you know, university course, apply to your university courses. I suggest you apply for all the three courses as early as possible, work on college applications and scholarship applications simultaneously. Uh, so this is a little bit about the application timeline. Moving on to the application process, the Chevening application process involves two stages. One is the application writing, and then if you make it through the through that stage, you'll 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 be getting to the next stage. That's the interview stage. So once the application process commences, uh, applicants will be required to apply on the official website of Chevening. So the first stage um, involves writing of four essays in addition to your educational and professional background, you know, having met all those requirements, you also have to write four essays, right? So th these four essays are usually based on leadership, influence, networking, relationship building, study in the UK, and your career plan. So these four essays revolve around these topics. Each of these essays have a word limit of 500 words, all right? So the minimum word limit for each of these essays is 150 words. So, and uh, please note that applicants must meet the minimum word count of 150 words in, um, in the essay questions. If the minimum word count is not met, your application will be deemed ineligible. Um, yeah, um, also another thing that I'd like to point out, all applications are run through a plagiarism software. So please be mindful of that too. If an applicant commits plagiarism, they will be disqualified. So now moving on to the first essay question, which is leadership and positive influence. Um, while attempting this essay, I suggest you start with an anecdote um, that showcases your leadership skills. All right. So you could start the leadership uh, essay or any essay for that matter with a quotation or a line, but make sure you're not using up too many words as there is a strict word limit. Uh, some of the things that you can talk about in this leadership and influence essay are, like I'll just list out a few things. Um, share an example of how um, you could have taken an initiative, how you have taken an initiative to work either alone or with others to achieve something positive, right? Like it could be anything. Uh, it doesn't have to be something that's path breaking, something very huge. It can be something as simple as starting a committee on a student campus to forming a book club or organizing a protest or mobilizing people for a collective action, etc. So you can use examples from your early academic experiences or even you can date back to your school experiences rather than examples from your most recent or current uh, professional experience to showcase your leadership abilities. So it can be something, you know, that has happened sometime during your school or like something that's happening to you right now. So yeah, um, while narrating these instances um, in your essays, Make sure your individual contribution is clear. You know, talk about what you did, you know, as, as a part of the collective. Um, mention numbers and statistics if possible. For instance, 
if you have helped people with securing um, or if you provided um, you know pro bono legal aid to people helped people with something uh, let's say domestic violence complaints or whatever state the number of people you have helped you know because i suggest um, you focus you emphasize on the numbers and statistics also um, uh, further i suggest focusing on sharing one or two detailed examples uh rather than listing out as many examples as you can because um focusing on one or two detailed examples is much more imp impactful than listing out a lot of examples um so essentially what you do throughout this essay is that um okay you did this and this was the end result so you demonstrate clear examples of leadership and influencing with some concrete results Ma'am, you are not audible. Just a second. Huh? I think we might have lost the connectivity there. Um, I'll take it further by the time J. Lakshmi joins. Um, so, she was talking about uh, incorporating and quantifying impact. So, let's say if you have worked on any particular project, please, please give the numbers around that. And whatever examples you present, it has to be in star or car approach. When we say star, it means that you have to uh, you know, frame it in a way that it explains the situation, what was the problem in hand, what task. Uh, you, you you did what action you did um, and what was the result of it or you can use the car approach that is context action and research because you never know who exactly is reading your essay and they might not be aware of the context you're coming from simple example if you have worked on any uh, project by csr okay let's say and you were addressing uh, uh, you were renovating uh, one of the low income schools and the motive behind was how to how do we influence the environment around a student and how it can you know contribute to better learning so you explain the problem first that what was the context how you approach that problem what was your role okay not the team's role your individual's role and what was the outcome of it so jobi example up shortlist karenge whatever examples you are writing in essays of evening it has to be in this approach that it captures the context the action you took and the result the outcome and the outcome if possible preferably please use uh, numbers wherever possible okay avoid using quotes do not start your leadership essay saying that nelson mandela feels this uh, said this about leadership or um, uh, mahatma gandhi said please don't don't waste your words you have just 500 words and it's very difficult to bring in your lifetime of experience into less than 500 words so please uh, save as many words as possible and whatever you write it has to be in the context of in that particular format star or car approach and please keep essay simple if you think that uh, you will be using high frequency words extremely difficult english words and that will grab attention please don't do that keep your essays and answers quite simple quite straightforward because you again as i said we do not know who exactly is reading the essay so we would like to make it as simple as possible for the person for the reader okay Go to the next slide. Uh, sorry, Jay is back. Thank you, Jay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm so, I'm so sorry. My internet we is. We can go to um, networking now. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah. I have like just two more points to cover. If you want me to, you know, talk about it in the leadership uh, essay. Um. So another important thing is, you know, you could even perhaps talk about your idea of leadership. Who do you consider a leader? What does leadership mean to you? You know, what are the important traits of a leader? So maybe you can also like talk about these things. Um. Right. I mean, of course, be mindful of the words and then see how you want to like talk about these things, where you can fit in. Um. So and another thing that I'd like to point out is that occupying a particular role or or a position. in itself is not sufficient to demonstrate leadership skills so therefore you can even talk about something that you witnessed in your country or in your community that gave you an understanding of good leadership skills so yeah and coming to influence right the, the, the essay is leadership and positive influence so coming to influence emphasize on 
how your actions or initiatives have shaped the opinions or actions of people around you so you can talk about the positive impact of your actions um mention numbers if possible like i already told you define the extent um you started something like let's just say you start, started something like a camp uh, like a committee on a campus and then you went on to connect connecting with different committees on you know other university campuses and then you garnered support or you extended solidarity to you know something that was happening so you know emphasize on that to what extent um, and you know the numbers um i yeah another thing that i wanted to emphasize was avoid quotations something that manzar has already uh, told you about moving on we talk about the next um, essay that's networking and relationship building right so networking has become a buzzword of late so now what does networking mean to you so now some of the things that you can um you know i said uh, some you know while attempting this um, essay some of the things that you can talk about are you know what what does networking mean to you uh, what is your idea of networking why do you consider it important um and focus on the qualities that you possess that make it easier for you to network or you know why is it that you prioritize networking okay and um use instances um as to have you been in spaces that allowed you to network either at your educational institutions or at work use examples from your own life to demonstrate in uh, specific detail how and why creating or you know even uh, facilitating these networks have proved beneficial you know um so as you attempt this essay connect your ideas and notions of networking with clear examples of how you've been using them or how you intend to use them show these relationships uh, as in just try and establish a, a link there you know this is what you think these are your ideas and these are your notions and then this is how you've done it or you know you intend to use them uh so you could also um in this essay you could also outline some of the principles or philosophies that guide your um understanding or you know your guide your professional relationship building uh and while explaining your principles you could mention qualities in you that make this networking possible you know and talk about your deliberateness or initiative that influence your decisions in doing this you know your value systems and you know why why is it important for you to you know um network and you know establish these networks or you know uh, facilitate these networks so yeah um thank you jaya um just one additional point here um again please do not mistake your following or instagram on linkedin as a huge network so please do not code these that i have more than 5000 followers on instagram and i have a huge network please don't do that and if you have to give an example of network the idea is uh, how exactly you used the people you know to address a problem for example let's say in your locality there is an issue of uh, sewage okay now um, you as a person you know someone who is working in municipality or of the of the city of the town you reach out to the person you use a method of rti or writing letters to them and regularly we are following up with them and one day they finally decide to act on it just an idea that okay you knew someone and you approached this problem through the resource of the network you have okay a very very small example but this is how you can portray that how you addressed a problem using the network and what was the outcome the same example has to be given in the star of our approach so please what are examples you put it has to be in these two uh, structures now i'll request sadas to walk you through the next two essays which is uh, choice of courses in the uk and your career plans sadas over to you yeah so um now that you convinced the committee of your leadership and networking skills in this essay you'll have to talk about you'll have to basically justify the courses that you've chosen and the universities that you've chosen um so in this essay mainly we talk about three things we talk about the course that you've chosen the university that you've selected and we also talk about why do you want to study this course in this particular university in the uk why not any other country as well so um a classic mistake while writing about your courses that uh, candidates often make uh, and that i made in the first uh, in my first uh, application as well was that uh, copy pasting the information on the uh, university web page to the to your essay 
and also some candidates tend to write about the ranking of the universities and how well the university is placed, how well the university is ranked. So basically this essay, while you have to talk about the you know courses and the universities but it is also about you why do you want to study this particular course and why do you want to study in this particular university so be very mindful of that um in this essay you want to basically justify uh how is this course related how is this course related to either your previous work experience or how it will help you in your future career goals um and for this essay, the key is to be as specific as possible. Again, do not copy paste from the university web page. Tuning already knows that uh, the universities are really well placed, that they're really well ranked. They know that these are good universities. What they want to know is why you want to, what is the value that you will get out of these courses or from these universities. Um, ideally, you would have, you would want to choose a course that is either related to your academic uh, previous academic or professional background or that a course that will uh, that is related to your uh, career goals and uh, regarding the courses you will get the information on the university web page if you go to the university web page that will have all the requirements listed uh, what are the universities looking for what is the curriculum of the course what are the modules who is going to be teaching the modules uh, every bit of information will be listed in the university web page. So it is um, suggested that you go to the university web page and you do a thorough research of the course that you're choosing. And when you have done that, uh, the structure of the essays remains same. You talk about the problem, the motivation, or any knowledge gap as well. If you're working in a field and you uh, and there's a problem and you feel that you don't have the adequate skills or the knowledge set to deal that with the problem, you maybe start with that. And then you talk about how the course might help you gain that skill set or gain that knowledge. Uh, so when you come back, you can uh, apply those skills and that knowledge set in solving the problem. That is one way to do it. Uh, when I did my uh, this essay, uh, I was very specific. I talked about the modules. I talked about the curriculum. I talked about the professors. Um, you might want to talk about maybe some professors have similar research interests to what you want to work in or what you want to do. That is one way to go about it. When you're talking about the university, you might want to say that this professor is uh, working. I have, I've been following their work. Um, they're doing this research that I'm really passionate about and I want to collaborate with them I, or I get a chance to directly work with them, learn from them. That is also one way to go about it. Uh, but, the, but the key here is to be as specific as possible. Um, you also want to end the essay with why do you want to study in the UK? Why not any other um, any other country? For me, I um, I specifically spoke about London. I talked about how London is the cultural and economic hub and uh, how uh, all the multilateral organizations, their uh, head offices are in London. So I get, I have a chance to network with those organizations. So these are like small examples of how you can go about this essay. Um, also, uh, it is recommended that you do when you're talking about courses, you if you if you selected three different courses, maybe you want to uh, uh, divide those in three different paragraphs and talk about it. And also while you're talking about the courses and the, you also talk about your university in a few sentences as well. Uh, so basically what they want from you in this essay is they want to see how well aware you are about your course of study, uh, about your study objective. You also want to be very clear about your study objective. If you're studying this course, what is what is it that you want to learn from this course? What is your main study goal or study objective? And then you want to relate that to your career goal briefly so that it becomes a, a very nice bridge because in the next essay, you will be talking about your career um, goals. Um, so this essay is... Uh, make or break, I'd say, in your tuning application. A very important essay, and um, you might want to read the cue very clearly. It says to, tuning is looking for individuals who have a clear post-study career plan. And uh, uh, tuning also requires you to talk about your short-term career goals, your long-term career goals. 
Uh, at the same time, they want you to also consider how these might relate to what the UK government is doing in your country. Again, very important point and uh, a point which a lot of candidates do miss. So um, for the career plan essay, uh, we want to be ambitious, but we, at the same time, we will also want to be realistic. If, you're, if I'm talking about, I want to be the prime minister of India in the next five years, that is uh, impossible. So you might want to, yes, we want to be very ambitious, We but we also want to be realistic. And uh, whatever we want to divide the career goals into, ideally into three parts, uh, the short-term career goals and the medium, and then the long-term, the short-term would be uh, the immediate career goals. When you go back, what, are you, what do you want to do? Uh, and then the, between two to five years, what do you want to do then? And then the long, longer-term career goals. Um, again, uh, use of data or statistics will make your case stronger. That greatly helps. Talking about impact also greatly helps. Uh, how your career plan or how... So this is the essay where you want it not to be self-serving. You want to talk about the impact. You want to talk about how your career goals are going to benefit your country or your community uh, in the long run. So you need to be, you need to demonstrate that very, very clearly. Maybe the short term, the immediate or career goals, you can talk about yourself. You can say that this is the role that I want to uh, be in. This is the organization that I want to work with. And this is the work that I want to do. But especially your long term career goals, if you're talking about five to 10 year career goals, you want to make it about the community, about the country. What is the impact that, you know, um, that is going to have, or what is the broader problem that you want to solve, or what is the vision that you have for yourself? So, so the vision and then the steps to how you're going to achieve that vision, basically. Um, as I already said, you want to talk about your short term and long term career plans. And then again, the key is to be very specific. Uh, you want to talk about the organizations that you plan to work with or the work, the exact role that you want to do or the projects that you want to take up or if you're going into research, the research projects that you want to talk about. Uh, so very, very specific. And a, another very important, extremely important point is to also relate it to what the UK is doing in your home country. Uh, so if you go to FCDO's homepage, they have a ton of projects going on at all times. Uh, they collaborate with organizations in India. They have projects going on in all areas, be it education or climate change or sustainability. So maybe you want to go to, you want to research about that a bit and then see what they are doing in your um, area of interest and then talk about that, relate that to your career path that FCO do, is doing this project. And I also want to work in uh, this. I want to contribute to that, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so in the career, uh, you want to conclude the career plan essay by basically, you in the leadership essay you talked about how um, you have leadership you know skills how you have networking skills and how Jinning and in the uh, course choice and you know so you talked about how Jinning is going to help you with you know studying this course etc cetera, etc cetera. so in the career plans uh, you also want to talk about what is the value that you also bring to the Jinning so maybe conclude that with that you know this is your vision and how you want to bring alive that vision and how you are going to benefit your country your community and Jinning at large. Uh, moving on from the essays, uh, Chevening will require you to have two references. Uh, ideally, it, it should be an academic and a professional referee, or it can be both academic, both professional. But it is advisable to have at least one professional reference. Um, so the reference must include just broader details of the contact details of the referee or how long they've known you and what capacity they've known you. But overall, if it's a professional reference, um, maybe they would need to talk about your leadership or your networking skills. Um, if it's a uh, academic reference, they might want to talk about your intellectual, personal, interpersonal qualities uh, and uh, how able you are to complete a academic program in the UK. Um, so after your essays are done, ideally you will get an interview call in February. 
you will uh, get an interview call and then the interviews take place between March to April. And then you're able to select your slots uh, uh, for the interview. So um, the I think if you have gotten to the interview part, most of your work is done because interviews are really, really chill. They're not very difficult interviews. They're not technical at all. Uh, they do not talk about your subject matter or um, you know how um, interviews usually are technical. They talk about, for example, if you're studying business, they won't ask you questions about your uh, subject, about business, et cetera, et cetera. The interviews are mainly focused on, 90% focused on the essays that you've written. So, um, so they, if you go uh, reach the interview stage, that means they already like your application. Now they just want to put face to the paper because uh, until now they only known you on paper. You know, you demonstrated that you're this person. Now they want to see if you're really that person. So your interview is that chance to be able to put your, you know, be able to convince the committee that yes, uh, you know, you are that person that you demonstrated on the in your essays. So um, it is advisable that you know you really revise your essays very well because the questions will mainly mainly be from your essays and if there are uh, general additional questions they will be around they won't be around your um they won't be technical questions at all just um about you just getting to know you better um yeah yeah that's about it Thank you so much, uh, Sadhar and Lakshmi. Um, just to, am I audible? Okay. Just to quickly um, summarize, uh, the applications will be opening sometime around September this year. Please start drafting your essays. When I say drafting your essays, in one of the uh, uh, slides we wrote about, start drawing a mind map. So whatever you have done to date, be it your uh, academic journey, be it your professional journey, please uh, start uh, compiling it, okay? Because that will not be only helpful for the achieving essays, but for all your higher education applications, all of the scholarships, all the all of the university applications. So you will be required to do that as well. Um, you need to have multiple, you know, reviews done for your essays because uh, again, you will be showing it to some of your friends, your colleagues, uh, maybe some uh, achieving scholars, and they will be giving your Feed, uh, their feedback as well so please if you wish to apply for achieving this year start drafting your essays now second do a thorough research of the website the achievements official website is the most resourceful website i have ever seen they have a section on blog uh, they have a blog section where they have listed down uh, uh, basic blogs on the uh, interview process the application process do's and don'ts so please thoroughly read those websites uh, those blogs and that will be helpful um, and yeah, um, that's that's all. We can now address questions. If there are any, I think there are many chat box. We'll go one by one, and then we can have people who have raised their people can raise their hand. Then we can address their questions as well. Some reason I found. Samir, can you can you stop recording because I can't see the chat box for some reason. Okay. Um, the first question is from the first question is I have not been able to find the exact place to see the list of courses in the evening site. Have they removed it? Um, I don't think so. There will be a list of eligible courses. So please. Uh, Try again, and if you still don't find it, you can reach out to other of us and we'll try and find it. Can we avail the scholarship for deferred admission? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, at this point of time, you don't need to get the offers from the university. All they want is three names. That's all. So, you can tell three names of the university. You can tell them three names. It can be that someone will get a rejection from these three names. So, you can tell them three names. Inform them during the interview that uh, I have changed my uh, choice of course. This is my new course. So they, you get one chance during your interview to change your choice of courses. It's not highly recommended, but it's still fine. That will not decide your achievement by our outcome. So yes, you can get, you can avail the scholarship for deferred admission as well. Just clarifying, do we need to have the admission from the offer? No, you don't need to get the offer from the university at this point of time. 
all you need is clarity on what course you want, which university you want to apply for, and just list down their names. And in the essays also, you have to explain it properly. The website men mentions that any mandatory employment that counted towards your undergrad or postgrad course would not be eligible. Yes, as I mentioned in the first slide, in the initial slides, um, if, if it's part of your curriculum, they will not be considering that. But let's say if you did an internship during your summer vacation or winter break, you can highlight that. Can we, okay, Lakshmi has already answered this question. Uh, please friends, no update on um, mentorship program. We have more than 900 applications. We are still reviewing it. So please, no questions on what is the status for mentorship program. We are still, trust me, we are still reviewing it. And hopefully by next month, early next month, you will be hearing something from us. Sunny has already answered. Thank you. Can there, these be similar three courses in three different universities? For example, can I list masters in creative writing from three different universities? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Okay, now I'll ask Asada for Jay, Jay to answer these questions. So, can we use short online courses certificates to add value to our learnings? Uh, Asada for Jay, would you like to answer this? Sorry, what's yeah. the question again? The question is, can we use short online courses, courses certificates to add value to our learnings? Um, in the essays or in the resume? I think it's in the, uh, so Fatima, if you can just clarify this. Um, can you please uh, confirm it? But I think even if it's in the essay or, uh, I don't think they, you give a resume, they, you might give an additional certificate in the education part that you can add. So that's, that's the question if I'm not wrong. Okay, by the time Fatima confirms. Uh, another question, Sada for Jaya, if you want to take this, what is the acceptance rate for Chimning in India, looking at the number of applications every year, maybe last five years? Um, I think it's 3% in India. Is it 3% or 1%? Overall, overall global, it's 2%, I think. Uh, yeah, 2%. In India, last, last year, because of the 75 years of independence, we had a higher number. A year before, we had somewhere in the in 40s. So out of, on an average, 500 students are shortlisted on an average for the interviews for India, uh, India, India, India program. And then out of 500, we select 40, 43, if I'm not wrong. But there's no official number on this. There's no official number on this. But selection um, rate will be, yeah, sorry. Sir. Yeah, no, uh, so I, I don't know if, I'm not sure, but I remember our program manager saying that it's for India, it's around 3% okay. on average. It is, it's yeah, maybe. It is that it's 3%. Yeah. Uh, do we need to be mindful of not being political in our essays? No, you don't. Uh, you can you can definitely, you can, you can write what you want to write. I don't think there has been an official or even an official stance on how political or non-political you have to be. So as long as it's making sense, as long as it's aligning with the, your career goal, or if you can justify it in your rest, in your interviews, just uh, try that. Yeah, as long as you're not being dogmatic, as long as you, you're, you're wording it very carefully, and as long as it's related to your, you know, whatever you're talking about in the essay, I think it should be fine. Is there an upper age limit for achieving? Uh, there is no age limit for achieving, if I'm not wrong. You can apply whenever you want to. Other questions has have been answered by JR. Is the interview online or offline? Uh, it's it's been it's been online for the last two years. So I think this will go on as well. Okay, again, please uh, questions related to the okay, Samir has answered that. Okay, now I think. Do, do, can we get the access to the recordings? Yes, the recording will be uploaded on the LUX website, just like the previous recordings of other, scholar, other workshops. So please uh, check that in, in a few days. Does community work outside the... Okay, Sadaf and Jaya, would you like to take this? Does community work outside the ambit of any organization count towards work experience? Um, 
Yes, I think so, because uh, they don't only require you to have formal like work experience, like working with an organization. It can be any any voluntary work. It can be internships. So, yes, I guess that, yeah, it okay. should not be a problem. Yes, you can found that as well. Yes. Okay, um, will the PPT Zoom recording available? Um, yes, we hope to upload it on the website. So please keep a track of that as well. Is IELTS needed? No, IELTS is not required for achieving. IELTS is the only requirement from the university. If the university asks to produce an English language test course, that is a separate requirement. But achieving has dropped this requirements uh, from 2020, if I'm not wrong. So no, no IELTS is required for achieving. Applications close somewhere around November, so early November. But let's wait for this year's timeline. Usually, August mein khulte the, November tak chalte the. Abhi September bold rank khulega. So just keep a track of the website and their social media handles. We'll try to answer it soon. I don't have three master's courses to choose in the UK since I'm a PhD applicant. I'm applying for anything program at Cambridge. Can I mention only one course? Mm. This is a tricky one. Um, uh, Sadar, do we need to give at least three or two is fine or one is fine? I think we need to do three. Um, yeah, the requirement yeah. is that you need to have three. You can have three courses from the same university or three different courses from three different universities, but it is advisable to have three. Just a second. Um... You don't have to apply to all three, but uh, you can just talk about it in your essays. If you're very sure that you're going to get into the one course that you're applying to. So you don't have to apply to all three, but yeah, you will have to write about it in your essays. Okay. So are you done with anointing? Thank you. We'll come to the people who have raised their hand just a second. Is there a four year undergrad criteria in the UK? Again, it depends on the course or college you're applying to. So uh, it's usually two is to one ratio. Just look at the requirement of the course and accordingly you can apply. But I think most of the course undergrad criteria of India, even if it's a three year undergrad, it's eligible. Um, should, do you want me to take the next question? Yes, please. Uh, would it be okay if we receive an acceptance from a UK university, but it is not one of the three universities we listed on our applications? I think this is something, if you want to change um, the preference of your universities, this is something that can happen, you know, during your interview or post your interview. You know, if this person were to write to um, the Shevning head, isn't it Manzir? Yes, because I yes. did something very similar, yeah. So, I mean, if you want to change uh, the preference of your universities, this is something that can, you can change later. Um, and the next question is 1500 pounds stipend is per month or per year. And this is including stipend, food, accommodation, tuition fees or not. So um, for this year, they're giving us around 1615 or 16, 16 pounds uh, stipend per month. And this is only for your living expenses and tuition fees are separate. Um, we need to have two years work experience post our UG course or will in-course internships count? Uh, so I, I say even voluntary work counts. Is, isn't that so, uh, Manzir? Uh, uh, yeah, internships do count, right? Yes, yes, yes. Voluntary. Yeah, yeah. In, yeah and voluntary paid and paid internship. Yeah, they all count. I am hmm. from state civil services. Last time I got offers from universities, but I was not selected for shaving. Please suggest few points for improving my shaving application this time. I think this is a very broad question. I uh, think you need to be a little more specific. Um, Can you repeat the question once? The, it says, I'm from state civil services. Last time I got offers from universities, but I was not selected for shaving. Please suggest few points for improving my Shevning application this time. Um, yeah, as I mean, Jaya said, it's, yeah, it's, a, yeah it's, a, it's a very broad thing. I mean, maybe you could write to one of us and you know we can get into the specificities of it. Um, what if we don't have any leadership experience? What can one possibly do to build that experience? Um, this is also something I don't think we can uh, strictly suggest or advise. But like I said in my presentation, I mean, if you have witnessed um, 
um something and you know you and that incident sort of helped you understand what good leadership means uh, you know you could also uh, use that um, in your uh, essay what if we don't have any leadership experience I think we yeah and I, I yeah questions in I the also upper section as well upper section as well no no these are the questions yeah there are many questions these are the new messages okay what are the documents required to apply um the documents that are required are transcripts educational transcripts um that too not at yeah, this point of the, time you need to produce the, the yeah, yeah. in february yeah yeah much later i mean there i mean people can uh, upload these documents onto the portal but if you don't um, that that's not something that you need to worry about um i have done many remote internships while pursuing my undergrad degree the work hours were not regular so can i add on average hours per week or something yes of course you can add uh, average hours uh is there any issue with educational gap i don't think so um any specific cgp or gpa cut off is required in cv uh, i don't think so um is working in uk not possible at all after shevning at least not for 2 years the next 2 years it's not possible um does support from external agencies help during the application or can i go about drafting by my own of course um you can seek mentorship um from project edu access or you know you can show it to your peer uh, peers i i can't think of any other external agencies um of course you can go about uh, your application on your own um manzar do you want to take other questions yep so we have um, some of them are uh, being answered by sadar fazal yeah please go ahead uh this is with respect to cgpa i don't think there is any strict cgpa requirement especially with the shedding um thank you so much for your guidance i need a little bit more clarity on the ug grade requirement what would an indian equivalent be for uk 21 undergrad degree also are ug scores seen contextually or in absolute terms for instance 7.2 by 10 uh might be top grade for english or history but might be below average for econ economics but i i i i really don't think um there's any hard and fast rule with respect to cgpas yeah for evening please trust me uh if there is no they don't fixate on your scores okay so for evening specifically i'm not talking about university applications um there is no hard and fast rule around i think but mostly 60% or 65 cgpa is Is a, is a good score you can definitely apply. They don't fixate on scores. Yeah, uh, I am a mother to to twelve year old son. Do they support the dependent? No, they, I I don't think they support dependents. They know. Um, is IELTS needed? No, uh, IELTS is not required for shaving. One question: um, like, How relevant is the relationship between career, the individual currency, is to course they are intending to pursue? Ah, uh, I have seen people who have. Permitted transition. As long as you are able to justify, that if you are, if let's say that I know someone who was working in SBI and they wanted to move to public policy, but then the the essays were around financial inclusion and how they have seen uh, lack of access to finances to particular gender and what exactly they would like to do on that. So if you are able to justify this transition from the career to this particular course you wish to pursue, I think you are safe to go. So don't worry about that. is there any need based requirement that needs to be fulfilled to avail the scholarship no whatever it's on the website whatever is the process that's all you don't need to showcase a particular need as long as you are able to qualify as per the criteria you can get the scholarship in the work experience column the form has a space of writing details of the work we have done how elaborate does this have to be is there any strategy to this or is it only supposed to be a short summary it has to be a short summary only it has to be a short summary only just try to give pointers for your essays uh, of your work so whatever work you have done try to write it into pointers if i'm wrong in other than jack and act to this if we have a work experience is it advisable to have one professional recommendation and one academic recommendation how important is it to have or not have academic it's fine it can be a mix of both it can be the whoever is giving you the recommendation they should be in a position to speak good about you so please it's fine but we advise and really advise that you can have a mix of it okay certain courses such as those offered by lsc are funded by chevening but also the scholarship so would it be preferred if i 
preferable if I do not list courses which are funded by the scholarship, but no, it's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, as long as that course is listed in the streaming website, you can apply and it will be a very separate process than other funding, uh, funding pathways. I have over four years of experience from Big Four and really looking to have a postgrad degree, not just change my career line, but also make impact back to the society. With these many experiences, we'll see, um, especially people with two years of experience have got the scholarship, people with 15 years of experience have got the scholarship, but there is no hard and fast rule that only after a certain period of time you can, if you are eligible, if you have more than two years of experience, apply. So your essays will define your outcome. So if you wanted to add something. Um, sorry, I'm lost. It's okay. Does not apply to a social sciences course or one that is directly oh, related to okay, social work reduce our chances of... No, uh, there is no... Is there a lag or something? Could be. And others, others, others hear me fine. Okay, yeah. So the next question is, does not applying to a social sciences course or one that is directly related to social work reduce our chances of getting the achieving scholarship? No, it's just that we, this panel is from social sciences, but they are, there are scholars who are from engineering background. There are scholars who are from STEM background and it's not directly linked to the social sciences. So it's mm -hmm. fine. How many scholarships are offered every year? Somewhere around 40 to 50. That is, you can try it. I have not yet started working, uh, started to apply to any universities. At what point should I start? Could you essentially provide an overlap of the application process for unis alongside for this evening? Okay. Um, firstly, we are short of time as well. Um, the university process starts somewhere around September. September to January. Tak chalta hai. Kuch course ke March tak chalte hai, kuch ke chalte hi rahte. So, wo ek alag process rahega. Please, that research has to be done at your level. Please go to the university website and they have listed down very properly. September is the ideal time when they start. So please start preparing from now. Once you have your achieving essays ready, that can be used for universities as well. So my personal advice would be focus on your achieving essays first, focus on the funding part first. So that's, can you let people in? They're in the waiting room. The rest, I think, has been answered by Jay Lakshmi. We can now move to okay, there are too many questions. What if I already have reference letters? Can I just upload them along with the information they need about the referees? You can, but you don't need to upload reference letters or transcripts at this point of time. It's only until February they ask for it. So please wait. What about psychology? Will the Chevening Scholarship Committee adhere to this course? If the list is mentioned on the website, the course is mentioned on the website, yes, they will. They will not say no to any particular course as long as eligible. Freshers can apply. I just completed my graduation in July. If you have completed a graduation, undergrad degree, if you have two years of experience in voluntary or field uh, uh, internship as well, you can apply. I'm not quite uh, outside extrovert having very limited social interaction, even in my professional endeavors. Could you share? Okay. Give me a second. Could you share a quick on how I came back in the second section? Up. See, even networking does not mean that it has to be from outside your professional space as well, even in your personal uh, professional space. In, in your professional space, if you have worked with teams or let's say colleagues or let's say um, teams look at in different geographical location and then you have together mm -hmm. worked on a task or project, you can mention that. So it need not be your social uh, extrovertness or how social you are as a person. It can be in professional space as well. Okay. Now I think we start taking questions from people who have raised their hands. So what we'll do is, do we need to provide certificate evidence of professional experience? Um, no, they don't ask for proof, proofs, but do not give any wrong information because if you are, if by any chance you're caught, you'll be blacklisted and that's not good. Also a very important part, do not, uh, do not use chat GPT now. It's a new thing now. People have been using it. Don't do that. They have, they are way ahead than this. So please don't do it. <laughs> okay. And uh, again, not taking repetitive questions now. 
if you have a masters already it's fine it's fine as long as you can justify this was my second masters but quite different from the previous one so if you are able to justify your course uh, your transition it's fine okay people who are asking questions around what is upper class sec uh, second class equivalence please uh, you can just look at the websites straight forward Sixty percent, if I'm not wrong, but basic research. Please do it. Please do it. Again, cross check on this. I'm not really sure. I think it's sixty percent upper upper second class. If we have three different courses, I have, have answered this. If we have three different courses in three different universities, will it be difficult to justify why the courses are so? No, it will not be difficult to justify. As Sadaf has already talked about, is look at look at the. Uh, Uh, professors look at the modules they teach and how it aligns with your career goal that is fine do we need to explain what we want to come guys you didn't pay attention clearly we have mentioned short term mid term and long term plan you can you should explain it that way and list the name of the organizations and that will be helpful is getting accepted by university by ch and you need to separate things yes it's a separate thing university applications has a different different process chevening has a very different process it's a scholarship process so you need to secure both separately great i think now we'll take okay no one has raised their hand so i think we have addressed it. if anybody wants to raise their hand now shishu shishu i can see please go ahead Shishu, Shishu, can you please go ahead? Just a second. Um, I have done yeah. that. Yeah. Hi, hi. Uh, actually, previous year I got collected for the interview. Uh, okay. for evening as well as for Marang Gomge Overseas Scholarship, Jharkhand. and unfortunately i couldn't make it possible uh, and i mean a waiting list of the marang gomke so i don't know what went wrong uh, maybe previous year actually i was in active course for master and at the end of the interview uh, supriya chawla asked me this question that if you get into evening then will you what will you do so i clearly said that i'll leave this course so like is it making any sense uh, this might have impacted my uh, process Okay, can I take this, Sadaf and Lakshmi uh, Jaya? Yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, we don't know. There is no recipe to this. If you have cleared, if if you have got an interview call, that proves that you have a very good profile. But there are many factors which go around for selecting a scholar, especially in the interview round, because every region. For example, we have a Delhi region, we have Calcutta region, we have Gujarat, we have Bangalore. every region have a, has a different set of quota number of scholars they can select every year the funding the the economy of the uk so i don't think it's only because of certain factors we are not selected and again we there is there is no uh, there is no i would say blueprint of how exactly you can get the scholarship it's really unpredictable and it's not just your profile there are many factors which come in during an interview stage So if you have got the interview call, that proves that you have a very good profile. But there are other factors also that come into play, especially what I mentioned now. So we, I cannot. Maybe I got it through some particular aspect, and maybe one they liked some aspect of you. They might not. They might have some limitation as well. So there is no hard and fast rule that what works and what does not work. So that's it's a very subjective thing. Aditi Singh, can you please go next? I try to unmute you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I actually wrote my question too in the chat. Uh, it's that ki I worked as a like I I was an undergraduate till now, so I have worked in society as even as a position holder and one year volunteering. So can I add those hours are not regular as on some months they are really regular and some months they are not so regular. So can I add those work hours as Like in the society I worked in, can I add those hours as working hours? I'm really confused about it because it's not in course, but it is also something I did as like volunteering and managing the society. Okay. Uh, 
um, see, I know people who have mentioned this and so it works. But if it's just about your society work in your, uh, in your application, mm. I will recommend adding some other work experience as well, not to society. So let's say your society is your work, you have any other internships, you can mention them, but I think you can mention them. But you cannot solely rely on your society experience to be shortlisted for the, inter for the uh, first round. If Sada for Jaya has a different view, they can add to this. Am I, am I clear, Aditi? Does that make sense? Okay. Um, I'll try to unmute you again and see if you can. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I do have internships, but like I cannot yeah. complete my all the hours with only my internships. That's why. Then mention that. Then mention the society. It's fine. Yeah. Okay, let me unmute Jay again. There's some issue going on. Uh, Chavi, you can go next. Hi, Manzar, Jaya, Sadaf. Thank you so much for such a wonderful uh, walk through the entire shepherding process. I just wanted to quickly ask about one thing. I mean, is it possible that the three courses that we are, the three universities uh, courses that we are mentioning during our application, the courses should be kind of related to each other? Uh, I mean, if there are different courses or diverse courses, I mean, how difficult it would be for us to kind of articulate our studying in UK uh, essay. Uh, so just wanted to get a, a you know, hands on on this. Should so I take that? Or, yeah, 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 please, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, I don't think... As, so basically, you can choose any course, no matter how different, as long as either it's related to your previous work experience or you can relate it to your future career goals. So basically, the key here is how well you justify and convince the committee that this course is going to add value to your skill set or your knowledge and, you know, your, the problem that you're trying to solve in future. Right. So as long as you have clear justifications, it should be fine. I'm Neil, you can go next. Good afternoon, guys. Thanks for doing this. Uh, my first question uh, was related to the different maybe sponsorships which were available the previous year because of uh, 75 years of independence, uh, specifically from the Tata, Pearson, as well as Adani Group. So just wanted to understand whether um, those are still there for this year, uh, especially uh, for STEM people, uh, like, for, like from the Adani, the, they had the AI ML uh, scholarship. Are they also going for this year? Uh, that yes. was the first question. Uh, the second may be a supplementary two questions which I have is, uh, so I also applied, like there are certain professionals who have applied for the young, India Young Professional Scheme ballot, right? So suppose if there is a situation if you are selected for achieving as well as the professional ballot scheme from the UK government, so can you actually maybe postpone any one of them? Uh, either the achieving or the young ballot. And the last question may be difficult for the team uh, was for your mentorship program, right? I understand like uh, uh, the number of applications you have received, now it has become e equally competitive as the achieving. Uh, so uh, just wanted to understand even if people are not selected, can we reach out to you on LinkedIn? Thank you. Okay, first answer, yes. The Adani, Unilever, Tata, still going on. I know people have got the AI one for Danny. Um, Jaya can add, Jaya is the latest um, entry into the achieving cohort. So Jaya can add if there are- No, uh, yeah. I, I was a Shemming scholar. So I have, I mean, there were uh, scholars from my batch who got Adani and um, yes. yeah. Tata, but I got the Shemming. So I don't know if the procedure is any different. Um, I have no clue. I don't think no, I can I, shed light. Yeah. I'm not sure. I was asking him, do you know of other like Tata one? Because I know about Adani, I know about the HUL. I know about Adani and Tata. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then it's, it's still going on. Uh, second yes. question on the ballot one. Uh, honestly, I haven't, even I haven't checked it properly. And this is a question which is completely out of my domain. 
uh, and I'm not sure if Jaya or Sadhu might also know about this. So this is the latest question for us. We will have to check that. So I'm so sorry for this. The last question on to access uh, mentorship. Um, we are trying our best, and if if for the Nafasa, if you don't get shortlisted uh, for either one on one or cohort mentorship, uh, you can. Um, I don't know. Maybe some other fan Jack can talk about themselves. Uh, you can reach out, but let me be honest. Uh, it's difficult. It takes time to respond for me. For me, as well. I don't know about other fan Jack, but yeah, they can talk about themselves. Yeah, I I have a lot of direct messages as well. Yes, you can reach out on LinkedIn. Um, um, I'll put the link to my LinkedIn here. Feel free to reach out. But as Manzar said, uh, it might <laughs> take a while because, um, yeah. yeah, bandwidth issues. But yeah, do do reach out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, likewise. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I got that direct messages too. Uh, so yeah, reach out. <laughs> we'll do as much as we can. Yeah. Um, Mahima, you can go next. Oh, thank you, Manzar. So I wanted to ask, uh, let's say I've applied to a particular university and simultaneously uh, the Shevning scholarship uh, process is also going on. When does the two clash? I mean, do you get the interview results before um, getting a, you know, an offer from the university or is it vice versa? No, um, the you, the interview results will only be out mid June or like third week of June, um, mm -hmm. and then the deadline for you to um, submit a unconditional offer from a UK university is July thirteenth. At least for us, it was July thirteenth. So up until then, you have time to submit your unconditional offer letter from UK. Not beyond that. Okay, and often when do you like get the offer letter from universities? It, de it depends on when you apply. Uh, for instance, you know, LSE uh, takes um, admissions on rolling basis. Uh, mm -hmm. There are universities that start their application sometime in September and then uh, applications go on until um, end of December or early uh, Jan. I, I don't think there is any uniformity with respect to that. Different universities um, uh, respond differently. So you'll have to check their, um, you know, timelines. But yeah, okay. you have time until um, second or third week of July. Um, at least for us, we had time until second week of July to submit um, an unconditional offer letter from the UK. Yeah. Okay. So ideally, we are like expected to hold an offer letter uh, to be on a safer side, right? Also, uh, yes, like, yeah. uh, I suppose for some universities, you have to pay that reservation amount, right? That you are going to, you know, take up that seat. So is that the case or no? Like nothing? Some some might ask that you have to give a deposit of mm -hmm. initial amount, but if you are in the process of achieving outcome is about to come in July, you can request them and say that okay, I'm waiting for achieving outcome. Please wait, so you can do that. Oh, okay. So you can inform the university that you have applied for shipping. If you have got the interview call, so let's it say if you get the offer letter from the university, and if mm -hmm. they say that pay say pay hundred pounds to secure the admission or this thing. Mm -hmm. Tell them that uh, I can't pay, wait for the scholarship outcome, okay. and they might consider that. Okay, okay. All right. Yep, thank you. Um, Janvi, you can go next. Okay, so in my case, so I have done work experience, and it doesn't actually meet the criteria of the entire uh, working hours required. So uh, now I'm doing work experience again. So which which is about which might which has to meet the criteria of 2800 hours so it does meet the criteria of 2800 hours but uh, like will they consider that i'm currently working uh, in the field or do they want 2800 hours complete before i'm applying when you are applying let's see if you apply in october and till that point of time, we should be having 2800 hours because the first uh, long listing happens in December. Okay, so portal se shortlist abhi karte. So you October to jitna work experience aap kaya tohta hai, wo aap kaya tohta Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, I can't see the name of the Zoom. 
user and meeting them. Pusar is Zoom user. Please unmute. Yourself. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Thank you Pusar. to all the panelists for the for this amazing session. So I wanted to ask that I'm already enrolled. Uh, for a master's course here in India, so it is applying to Shining Scholarship and also to other pro, uh, other programs in UK. Um, getting into getting a Shining Scholarship or getting in, admitted into a UK university would mean dropping out of the current course that I'm enrolled in. So is that a red flag? Okay, no one was other for Jaya. My personal personal this is no official statement, but I think. They will be asking like, okay, uh, this shows lack of clarity or some of the things. So it might, it might because it's another master's. But if there's some gap after a few years, then you can. So again, Shishu has texted. They did ask him. So it might. So uh, maybe get some experience and then apply. That's always advised. So even if it's for the same course, like I'm doing psychology masters in psychology, and I'm also I'll also be applying for the same course outside. So it's still problem. It's still a bit problematic. See, I, having said that, I I don't think you should limit yourself from applying. Okay, uh, please go ahead and apply. Again, um, I haven't come across people who have dropped out from this course. Again, and my circle is very limited. I maybe there are previous scholars who have done this, and it's completely fine. Um, you should, if you have the the listed criteria, you're fulfilling that. Apply. And maybe in the interview stage, you can, if you're able to convince the panel that why this was important for you and why this course is better, I think it's fine. But again, uh, interview me, kya pushenge, how they look at the answers, that is something really difficult. Jaya is again unable to unmute herself. So if Jaya has to add something to this, but yeah, I think you, if you want to apply, please go ahead and apply. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, there's another Zoom user. I hope it's a different Zoom user. But it, it will be helpful if you can help Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Um, yeah. yeah. So my question is: Is uh, applying to Oxford any different than applying to or you know other universities? Because once I checked their website and it showed that like even if you have to apply to masters you have to submit some research proposals etc so i just have to ask whether it's different than you know soas ucl it's uh, you know and uh, other universities so and also second question i have is that do we typically get the offer letters from the universities before the interview time so that like if we don't get those we can at least tell the you know the panel that we have not been selected or something like that Thank you. Sadaf or Jaya, would you like to take this? So, I mean, I don't know about the Oxford process because I've not put myself through that process. So Manzar will be able to answer. But with respect to hearing back from your university, like I already mentioned, you have time until July 13th, at least for us, it, you know, we had time until July 13th to submit an unconditional offer from a of letter from UK University. So at the time of interview, if you've not heard back from your university, you can, um, you know, say that and they will wait, um, you know, until the time i mean until the deadline so i don't think you have to worry about it um asking uh, answering to the first part um, yes um, so again some courses will ask you to submit a research paper some courses will ask you to submit uh, a writing sample which can be academic which can be you know it depends on the course you're applying to oxford has different departments and every department has a different requirement and so is the competitiveness. Um, but it's not very different from other universities. So even LSE will ask you to maybe ask you to write one SOP and one ref, uh, one uh, sample of uh, you know writing sample. But it it is very subjective, and you'd have to do research on your own that which university is, is asking what, what course is that, what what is the course demanding for the uh, for that admission process. So um, Oxford might have different departments and their own processes, but it's more or less similar to in other, other universities as well. Okay. Um, I hope we answered that. Do we um, have a... Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, th yeah, you answered my question. Thank you for that. But I would like to ask J uh, Jaya that, uh, so which means that if we do not uh, get to hear from the universities till uh, like till the day of the interview, 
and so can we communicate to them via email or stuff like that because interview yeah. tak nahi bola hai ki kaun sa university yeah, yeah, hai to baad mein achanak se can you just uh, pop up with uh, uh, an offer letter from you know the university jiska aapne unko mention hi nahi kiya hai kabhi so waisa hoga to kya you know yeah no so if you go through the shevning website right they have clearly mentioned that there is a different deadline for you to submit an unconditional offer letter from a uk university so whether or not you mention uh, this you know during your interview shouldn't you know affect the decision yeah don't you think so manzer yeah 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 shouldn't shouldn't matter yeah i think any more doubts we still have two more minutes we will be uploading this people are still coming i'm not sure how will we address your queries but um, you can reach out to sadaf or jaya and if they have time they'll respond i and since we are doing it along with our full time work uh, and to access so again bandwidth issues uh, chavi is this okay please go ahead and ask yeah just one last question how daunting was the diagnosis for for you all and minimum how many drafts i mean for the essay questions all of you have kind of you know prepared just to get a heads up <laughs> so the i would want i would nominate for the first question <laughs> so um I applied twice. I was rejected the first time. The first time I applied, I worked on my. I did multiple drafts and I worked on my essays for about four months, and I was rejected. Uh, the next time that I applied, I did it in two days. So, there's no correct answer to this. I yeah, think. I mean, yeah, I mean, my I was lucky. This was my first time. That was the first time I got through. The process is daunting. So, whoever is preparing for Chivning, please consider this as a marathon race. Uh, getting a scholarship is a separate process, and getting the university offer is a very separate process. So, from now, uh, this is we this is July as we speak. July say next July, like this is almost one year's journey. Be prepared. It's going to be a marathon journey. Multiple drafts. My my essay alone got seven changes, seven drafts. So. some get it in three or four but depends on the background you come for how easily you are easily you are able to communicate and write or draft i took my own time so again it's going to be a long process especially the waiting period is going to be daunting so be prepared for this and uh, yeah all the best okay um we'll have to wrap up in two minutes friends i don't think we have more time than this um mubash mubashir if you can go next Mubashir, I have a flight on YouTube. Please go next. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thanks. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, basically, um, I'm from uh, State Civil Service of JNK. I have ten years of work experience, and uh, I have also already done uh, one of my masters in public administration. Now, uh, last time I applied for Jimming, unfortunately, I didn't got the scholarship, but I got offers from uh, five or six universities. Uh, my, uh, I don't have some specific question, but I want to know that uh, these uh, Jimming essays. Uh, form from your side uh, for reviewing those essays i i, I think we lost you in the last but you said from your side what uh, can we get any um, platform or any sort of uh, this feedback from your team regarding chevening essays okay uh, so we we had our first round of applications for mentorship open last month uh, the first phase is currently being finalized in the second round we will be uh, opening applications in august so if we have a lim- available seats i mean depending on the bandwidth of our mentors we can you i will encourage you to apply and yeah, uh, thanks uh, uh, thanks uh, uh, i would like to say that i have already applied okay then then just just wait. if you have already applied just, okay, yeah. okay just i wanted to know that uh, can we share our essays for yeah, some no, review or we, we, we will be doing that so specifically uh, specifically we run uh, master classes for scholarships so even for if you are a mentee at eduxs you will be getting support for scholarship reviews as well so don't worry about that okay thank thank you very much thank you um 
okay we'll we'll take two more questions and i think we are good to go we can share our share our uh, social media i think sadaf has already done that uh shishu you want to go for next yeah so uh, just a uh, quick interest i'm i want to show that actually i'm connected to eclave as well but uh, this year i want to mentor some students on uh, university application so is it any possibility can i be part of that yeah yeah definitely we will be having our mentor recruitment soon first we want to finish the mentee recruitment part mentee uh, on onboarding part and then we can have the mentor recruitment we will definitely post so please follow the social media handles and we'll get back to you okay um i see one zoom user i think this is a different zoom user last question thank you please go ahead who so where is that zoom user so i i think i didn't raise my hand it's the same zoom user okay but i do okay, have great. a question if you want to take it <laughs> go ahead please yeah so um so i know um, a person who had applied for chevening and they got uh, rejected so and we were discussing about the lors and all so uh, you know some lors start with uh, us usme dikhne wale ne interest nahi liya hota zyada to whom so ever it may concern and some lors are written with interest and usme uh, you know address bhi kiya jata hai to mujhe lagta hai uh, main aapse puchna chahti hu ki does that make a difference actually kyunki koi um, you know fazool sa lor wo bahut acche se likha hua you know does that actually matter sadaf aur jaya if you want if you want el sari go ahead it doesn't honestly uh, again a very my experience of doing this for last 2 2 and a half 3 years <laughs> uh, it's not the lor that will decide the chevening outcome lor is just for the cross verification cross checking it's a final uh, checklist but it's i think it's the essays and the interview that that will decide but having said that said that there is no official you know scoring criteria Uh, we don't know we don't know i am this year as well we had many mentees who performed really well but it did not work out for many of us despite knowing that they have amazing profiles interviews were on on point but it did not work out so you just cannot predict what the panel likes and what they don't like and what are the other factors that comes into picture as i have already mentioned okay so all the best <laughs> that's it a few people are asking if they weren't selected for mentorship in june would they be select can they apply again in august for the edu access no okay if you, if you get a rejection mail i don't think you'll apply you'll be able to apply in august let's be let's be hopeful we will we'll try to take as much as possible depending on our capacity All right friends I think I'll stop the recording